Oh, 67 Camaro day. Dan here, the Speed Shop. So I know the last video, if you're staying up to date, just right up to it, I was gonna keep working on 57 Chevrolet, but uh, <laughs> guess what, we changed our mind. So we're gonna work on this. This is my 67 uh, Camaro, obviously kind of plain Jane, nothing car. And we started working on it not too long ago. I know it looks uh, fairly complete. It's a basket case. And it's all gonna get stripped apart over the next few videos. A lot of this is all new metal, but it's just kind of sitting on there and ultimately not too happy. Uh, the quarter are just skins literally screwed in with a couple of screws and behind it, it's rotten away. There's nothing there. Now, I wanted to work on this car a bunch. However, I was kind of out of parts. I had a lot, but I was missing just kind of some key things. I think what we're gonna do is start at the front and work our way back. So over the past 10 days, two weeks, I've been collecting all sorts of stuff for this thing. Today we're gonna to focus on the subframe. Subframe's gonna come out. I'm gonna weld up some tabs um, so it'll bolt properly with new bushings. We'll strip it, paint it, and then I also have in these boxes, those would be brand new upper lower control arms, disc brakes, I think they're lowering control arms too. Um, so a whole new front end. Inside the house, I think I have tie rod ends and all that sort of stuff. So we'll have a like brand new rebuilt front end. So that's the plan on that. I was waiting on sheet metal. So a lot of that showed up. I have two full quarter panels. So oh, I picked up some seats last night, eh? When you see them, you buy them. So these are full quarters up into the sail panel and uh, they're actually gonna save me money because they go into the door jam. The skins don't do that and I, the door jam's rotten away. So I had to get that. The trunk floor is slightly rotten around the wheel tubs. So I bought these. These are, I believe they're two and a half or something like that, or three inch wider inner wheel houses. And those right there are the outer wheel houses. So everything is gonna come off we're gonna end up cutting into the trunk to eliminate that rust, basically right up to the frame rail, I think, hopefully not into the frame rail, but we'll find that out, and start sectioning these in, then the outers, then we can start fitting those quarters. Everything has to fit together. I also picked up a brand new trunk lid, no holes, no wing. Um, I think that was a 300 bucks. So this thing is literally gonna have new sheet metal from here down. Now I'm fighting out if I want to pull the back glass out or not. I probably should, to be honest with you, but I don't know, I don't know how lazy I want to be and how much effort I want to put in. I'm gonna pull the trim out a lot. I guess these things famously rot out down here. So we'll see if that's the case. We may end up replacing that panel. I don't have it. <sighs> I don't know, that's, that's future Dan problems. Current Dan, it's got to clean up in the garage because I've been using this as a catch-all the last few weeks as I've been working in the other garage. So a lot of the stuff was kind of go outside temporarily, put the sheet metal on the stands. We'll start putting the parts away. I don't think I'm going to put on the hoist. I don't know if I should or shouldn't. Because ultimately we're just working on the front end for now. So we'll uh, be able to turn it sideways, have a bunch of room. We'll peel that off and kind of go from there. We may need the engine crane out to kind of get stuff maneuvered. And I don't know what order I'm going to do things in. If I should strip it all down while it's on the car first, and then just take it off as a unit or what, but... Ah, we'll figure out as it goes. Anyways, I'm going to spend the next half hour or so cleaning up, getting it ready to go in here, have the heater blasting, because uh, that white stuff is snow. She cold out. Well, let's get it all together and uh, start working on these Camaros. This Camaro. I bought two. I, I forget all the time. Okay, we got the Camaro kind of tilted a little bit because I think my plan is strip all the sheet metal off and I'll put that over there. Subframe off. We have this area to work on it. Um, because these are these little plates I bought. I'm gonna rip off for 40 bucks. Ain't much to them, but I guess that's all the, the factory subframe literally would have been. Not, not too much to these hot rods. What these are, they have little alignment holes and they will go in subframes. The subframe where it was is all rotten out in this area which is very important on these cars because there's four bolts 
that hold the front frame rails on this thing. So your steering, your brakes and all that, and that kind of aligns it. And then there's some alignment holes. And then once you put the fenders and all that on, it kind of ties it together. So flimsy, flimsy, flimsy cars. Um, if you guys could do me a favor actually, and put in the comment section, subframe connectors about 7,000 more times. That'd be great. I don't think I'm gonna run subframe connectors. I don't, I don't, no one's told me I need them. So I think it'll be fine. Anyway, I think the hood's just sitting on there. We'll peel that off. The fenders are literally just kind of hung on with just a few bolts. Take all that down. We're gonna leave the doors on because I think they were hassle to put on. And uh, yeah, once we get that apart, we'll see. We may strip all the front suspension off while it's still together. Might make my life a little easier. I haven't decided. We'll get it peeled off and we'll go from there. Okay, so shell stripped down. Um, man, you know what else you guys should remind me about is how beat up the firewall is. It's an old car, the way she goes. It's fine. They actually saw a whole firewall section you could have put in here. I was like, eh, I don't know. That's a lot of work. And honestly, the more I work on this car, the more I think uh, I might kind of put it together and then sell it. I got another idea for another car, you know, but that's, that's today, tomorrow I might love it. Um, so here's the dealio. With this, we have the whole front suspension on and obviously I have to take it all off to replace it with that stuff. Um, but the nice thing is the subframe is actually in really nice shape. I thought it would be worse, but all we do is kind of clean it up, wire wheel it really lightly. It'll be ready for like some you know, POR 15 and some paint. And we know big deal. The only thing that's gonna be a bit of a hassle we have to do, we have to break the ball joint, one of the ball joints and uh, take the spring out and then once that's off it just all come off in a big a big hot mess so typically what you do is you jack it up you kind of put a floor jack under it you do whatever you got to do break the ball joint you know let it go down there's no weight on this thing so that's not great what we're gonna end up doing is uh this is ridiculous this is all i have though a little spring compressor so i'll uh we'll take the wheel off i'll show you how to do maybe one side then we'll just fast motion the west uh, the rest Break a ball joint, we'll jam this through, tighten it up, let it all loose, and then once that comes off, we get the spring out, and then it's control arms off, the whole steering, everything's gonna come off in one, one big piece, hopefully-ish, and then, uh, yeah, steering box off, the center link, the whole deal, then it's just four bolts holding this thing together. We'll uh, use the engine crane. Everybody told me, use an engine crane, you're an idiot. Yeah, 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 I get it. And uh, we'll engine crane this thing off, wire wheel it. I got to go get some paint. So we'll run out, get some paint, paint the whole thing, maybe scuff the firewall, shoot that black, have some lunch while that dries, and then uh, realistically put it back, reassemble. It just sounds easy, but I'm sure it'll be an all day into the wee hours of the night to accomplish this. I do want to get this done today. So it's a roller again. And then we can start working on Quarter panels. I really want to put the quarters on. Unfortunately, there's a lot to do before the quarters go on. Okay, let's see what happens here. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the uh, tie rod right quick. So, I'll just go ahead and fast forward through this. Because if you don't want to take the tie rod off, well, keep watching. So, we got the tie rod off, which means the steering is just all loosey-goosey. Now I pulled the cotter pin out of the lower ball joint. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen the old girl. 
Now you want to make sure you still have lots of threads on it. So we're going to let it bang down. We're going to use the spring. So there's all the threads are still on. Now you can be a couple ways. You can smack it with a, a hammer until it kind of just oblongs and shocks the unit and pop it right down. We could try that. Or if you don't care about reinstallation, which we don't because the boot can be ripped, you can just use a pickle fork. But uh, see what we can accomplish here. Oh, okay. So now we're out of the, the ball joint itself, which is good. Now we gotta put this together. Guess I should be a little more prepared. All this is gonna do is compress the spring. So we'll put it through as if it was a shock. This would be the bottom little hold down, which is just a piece of bar, which I welded a washer on. This is overkill size, but you know, we're trying not to die here. Bear with me. Let's snug this up. And again, you can have the floor jack under it and all those things for safety. But uh, I'm pretty confident. So now, let's go ahead and tighten this up. So we just have to take the load off, compress the spring a little, which will take the load off that uh, ball joint. Gotta get a little tension on it or else it'll just kind of spin. There we go. Sometimes you gotta grab with the printer vice grips. This one's also like pretty wore out. Story of my life. So this is now pulling. I need a pair of vice grips. Frustrated. Okay. Back with all the right tools. Vice grips. So the problem is, it just wants to turn a little, it's a whole rod, so we gotta just kind of hold it very gingerly. Very little pressure, but kind of too much to do by hand, you know what I mean? So as we do this, compress the spring. Yeah. Gonna work quickly, so it's just entertaining to the max. So we got that. Now you can see there's no load on this nut anymore. So we can take that off. This is completely loose. So that's good. Now we have to do is just reverso change o This is a little bit time consuming, but we're just slowly but surely gonna let all the tension out of the coil spring. And uh, can't really go anywhere. Obviously we're gonna loosen it slowly and the rod's through it so it can't shoot out and kill you. I always think this is the safest way of doing it. People always tell me get different spring compressors and all that. Anything's possible. I've done it this way a bunch of times. It's cheap. All thread rod is cheap. Lots of strength. And ultimately, I don't know, it just gives you a few extra little safeties, which I enjoy. So let's struggle to get this off real quick. And uh, yeah, let's peel this side of the suspension off. Okay, well, as per usual, I learned a lot on camera or off camera. Um, the spindle, the little, well, it's the backing plate for the brakes, it got caught on the lower control arm, wouldn't let it fall away. So you have to break it at the top and let the top go down, or the top come up, I should say, and the spindle and the lower control arm go down together. So that's the plan. Also, you gotta loosen these lower control arm bolts, just because they're kind of snug, same with the uppers, you know, you loosen there and go. So that's the plan, I think. Uh, We'll set the camera up, we'll jam that all the way through, and then Danny's making a little lunch. So I want to get that taken care of, because that's best priority. So I think we'll take this off, and then I have to go run out. I don't have any uh, like top coat or nothing like that. So eat lunch, go get that, let the heat blast in here, and then uh, wire wheel it. When we come back and start painting, have a bit of an easy afternoon while we uh, literally wait for paint to dry. But yeah, it comes apart. It's all, it's all coming back to me now. It's been years since I've done this style little suspension, but it's the same as my uh, 71 Nova, but now, now I remember, so we should be fine. Let's jam.
Okay, she's off. So now, yeah, we got going on here. So, oh, there's the pieces. So you can see how this is all wallered out. And what's gonna happen is we have this piece, which lines up with that hole, and plate it, weld it, and we're golden in theory. Same with back there, there's that little piece. Um, and this is what it is. So it's supposed to center itself. Well, obviously it cannot. Yeah, we get these. Don't try the hammer. There you go. That's how we get our alignment of the front end. How crazy is that? But I'm gonna get something to eat. I have to get a wire wheel, but honestly this thing's pretty good. A little bit of brake clean and kind of wipe it all down. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. And we'll uh, get it all dialed. There's a little, like I cut a piece of metal off there, and I think a piece back there, somebody had added stuff on at some point, but all kind of irrelevant. It should look pretty good. And look at this, just junk from the factory. That's what you were buying. Low, low standards. Fits in perfect here. So we got this thing all dialed. Now, this is the fun part that I always love about old cars. Everyone's all like, I'm a hack, right? Fine. Look at this. This is a factory weld. Look at that garbage. That's what these things were in 1967. Like this isn't like, they didn't even weld it. That's on the top, right? So some 18 year old kid on a Friday was slapping these things together with zero experience and zero care. Now we think these things are just these phenomenal cars that are millions of dollars or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands. They're garbage. Um, Subframes had a few ding-dongs. Um, the Nova was the same thing right there and right there, uh, whatever. And then this, the center or whatever cross member. Look at all the dirt that I blew out of it. So now we've got these things all cleaned up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change the plan as per usual. So I kind of wire wheeled it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to weld these up. I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to grind these, whatever this crap is, off some sort of bar that was across there. We'll grind that off. Then I'm going to POR 15, just like here, up on top. This is the top of the thing. You'll never see this. Here, here, and here. And then we'll let it dry, slide it in the car, then we can do the whole front well, it's on the car and easy to get to versus trying to be, you know, bent over and flipping around and all that. It'll be a, a big hassle. So that is going to be the plan right quick here. So set the camera, start welding, and uh, schmuck her up, let it dry, and put her on with four bolts. It sounds easy, but it'll be a couple hours.
Okay, we're all welded up. Um, got my little POR15. Ooh, that's hot still to touch. Gave it a quick shot of brake clean. They sell these little six pack cans, which I like because if you, uh, you get the POR on the top there and try and close the lid, she ain't open it again. Now it does recommend um, thin coats, so that's fine. Now what I'm gonna do, we're gonna kind of brush this on, let it flash for a little bit of time, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with a little bit of top coat paint, which will kind of just get in there. It's got all sorts of recommendations, but I clearly know better. Uh, when I say recommendations, I do mean instructions. The POR stuff, I believe it does not have UV protectant is the main thing. So we'll just spray bomb it after and let it go. Like I said, we're gonna go to in this area there on the top and sides. And then I'm gonna go in, relax for a little bit while this dries. But you look good. Nice thing about this is you paint it on and it kind of dries without brush strokes. I don't know, people, some people love it, some people hate it. I generally don't do a whole lot of this, but you guys want me to paint things, so now guess what? You're gonna literally watch paint dry and like it. Okay, so it's a little ways later. It's still kind of tacky to the touch um, in, in a thick area, so it's dry, but I think it looks pretty good. Ultimately, you're not really gonna see a whole lot of this. This is the area you are gonna see. Um, this just has to be kind of break cleaned out. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in. We have all of our bushings ready. So I'll plunk those in. We'll use the engine crane, slide in, lift it up. I got some uh, kind of miscellaneous, well not miscellaneous, or grade eight uh, bolts. The bolt kit, six bolts and washers was $120. So I went to the bolt house and got some grade eight hardware for 25 bucks. So I'm sure it'll be the same, I hope. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and put that all on. I'd like to get a coat on this and then let it sit a little bit. The, uh, I haven't done the underside obviously. And really the only section we have to get the underside is right here. So that's where the control arm is going to kind of be. The rest we can get to any other time and, and kind of go from there. Ultimately, for myself, all I really care about is this top section anyways. You'll be able to see that when you look down and see the sides. Uh, my Nova was done that way when I got it. The guy had done the, the coating on it. It looked good. And, and it has held up. Um, I know there's some kind of mixed reviews. I don't know if I'm installing it right or not, but it's meant to kind of go over the stuff, clean it up, do the best you can, and give it a bit of a top coat. If you don't top coat, I think it doesn't have the UV, so it'll get kind of chalky and white or something. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much that. There's a little bit of kind of hairiness in the front, which I don't know how crazy it'll go, just because that's all gonna be covered by the core support anyways. The rest looks pretty good. So let's set the camera up. We'll go ahead and slide this in zing it up and uh, start coating and then let's sit for a few hours before we put the uh, control arms and brakes on.
There it is. That was a lot of work. But it looks good. Um, many hours. A lot of it's waiting though. So we'll let this sit for another couple hours. It's actually Saturday, so Danny's channel, more smooth, go live. So if you wanna, you know, BS around. By all means, go over there and give her a hard time. Uh, I might start putting the control arms on later. We'll just see. I should probably paint the springs, actually, now that I think about that, so I'll do that right quick. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of that. You know, hang the control arms on, the brakes. Well, you know, we're not going to plumb it all. We're probably going to put the steering on. And I'd like to kind of get the firewall dialed, make it look like something. This car's not moving out of the garage anytime soon, so it's not a, a huge rush, but uh, get all cleaned up. And really, if we kind of paint the firewall up nice, all that nice dimpling, you know, that's like a golf ball, eh? so it goes through the air quicker. You guys thought it was just some hack. No, no, it's, it's aerodynamics. Fuel mileage, that's what we're trying to get here. So that's that's that. Everything lined up perfect. Um, there's a couple of locating holes, which is great. I can still tighten up the subframe. I would say it's like, you know, Pretty good, but I just used a little ratchet. I don't know what the torque or the, the torque spec is, but it's probably a lot. So we'll get that dialed, and I'll make sure I have that done before I start hanging panels uh, permanently, because that'll be pretty important. But anyways, we're going to uh, paint those springs, crank up the heat for a little bit, and I'll uh, I'll come out a little bit later and start sweeping up. I don't want to sweep and get a bunch of dust in the air and have it get all speckly on that. So we'll let this kind of harden up and kind of go from there. Painting. What the hell's going on here? Are we on the right channel? Okay, it's a new day, and uh, if you didn't watch the live stream last night, then obviously you missed a few things. I put this side together just to kind of figure it out, and I gotta say it's pretty decent kit so far from what I uh, what I could put together. I mean, it's uh, she's thrifty, but uh, you get what, you know you get what you pay for. But this is actually I was pretty happy with it. So it had instructions. What a concept! Um, it has a dust plate. Like a back plate, which is amazing. Uh, it's got his own little bracket. All the hardware is good. I did screw up one nut, so I'll have to get a new one. Um, the only two things that I found, you have to make sure you read the instructions, and I actually did, shockingly. The um, inner bearing, you have to test fit it on the spindle, because I guess if you, it could be, it's really tight fit, it says. You may have to emery cloth um, the spindle a little bit. I didn't, so just be aware of that. Because if you put that together, it doesn't want to go on. It gets all jammed. You're going to have all sorts of issues. The back seal was pretty good. It was actually almost feel like a little loose, but went on there. It was fine. The issue I ran into, but that was a me problem, the lower control arm on this side did not really want to fit. But it's because this section here, you can see it's all kind of bent and kind of, see it's all kind of gibbled. And this side's got a nice little thing. Um, it had a little divot. Something had come into it. And it made like the pocket that the controller had to sit had a little, a little tight. So I had to whale it in there. And, and once it was in there, it's fine. Um, reuse the hardware and all that. The upper control arms, you can adjust if you want them sitting forward or back by changing these slugs around. So I put it back, which in the instructions, I believe it gives you more caster. So it should track straighter. So I think that's the way I put it in my Nova when I did it many years ago. But yeah, that's that. So we'll get the other side. We'll, we'll do that one on camera right quick. It should go fairly simple. I don't have the springs in. Hopefully we can put the springs in the same way. And we've got to get like a big claw compressor. I think I have, a, I have one next door, but if I just get jam it in there and put it back in, we should be, we should be good. Now, this is the thing right here where hopefully you guys appreciate the old paint. Oh, because this would be a whole day behind. I painted it and obviously I was trying to work while well, it was still wet, which didn't work out. Paint kills, I, I don't, I'm not against having shiny paint on things, everyone thinks I am, it's the time that I just don't have. Because now it's the next day when I'd like to be cutting quarter panels off, we're still putting the front end together. Will the car be nicer? Yes. But at the end of the day, does it make it any more functional? No. Let's get set up on this side and see if we can jam her together right quick. All right. Let's get after this. So I hung the lower control arm. It's literally just put it in. This one went super easy. Two bolts, you're done. Uh, originally, this thing came with the bolts going through the cross member, which is a bit of a hassle. Um, I put them through the other way. I can't see it makes a difference because it's easier to hammer them in. This is our spindle. I looked them over. I don't think there's a right and a left, so they look identical. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to hang it from the upper control arm just for 
ease of installation, we may have to um, hang it on the lower control arm or have it completely off when we put the spring in, just because of how everything has to kind of line up. So now, what was the order? We have to reuse our steering link. So I painted everything, well, whatever I'm not holding. So that's gonna go on the back side. Oh, Danny's camera ready. So that's gonna just hang out there. Then on the front side, there's kind of a bunch of things that all have to go together in a hurry here. We have our bracket. This goes what way? So that's gonna catch one of the steering bar bolts and then this top one, it's got its own hardware for. So, dump out this bag of miscellaneous. How to have it going for? Outside in. There was a longer bolt. Put that through there. Well, I guess I could put it the right way. Is that how it goes? Nope. I got her, I got her. Someone's got to pay attention. There's a crowd now. Okay, so that's there. And there's kind of a shorter bolt front. This goes forward on this one. So it's got two bolts that line up. This top boy right here goes in. And then actually on the dust cover, it's got these two little tabs. So you fold them over. It's like a little lock and lock and deal. I guess you can put Loctite in here. I've done that on tri fives before. So that goes on like that. Oh, before I do that, again, this has to go on. I'm on it, I'm on it. This goes, this acts as a spacer actually. I wish I could see the other side, or I had the instructions on it. Huh? It all makes sense. You just gotta do it three or four times. How many times did you use the hammer today? Uh, just once. Actually, the, the panels went on very easy today on this side. That side's been Camaroed, let's be honest. <laughs> it was involved in some sort of a mullet, you know, stolen beer situation. Okay, I think that'll work. Like that, so now we'll just flip these around. I'm gonna put the nuts on the back side. That's all to kind of Align it and make sure it's good. Okay. It's like building a brake sandwich. Okay, so there we go. That's all together. I'll run those down with some jam nuts that came in the kit. Actually, one I buggered, unfortunately. Then I'll come back, I'll get the rotor, I'll put clean the bearings up and get them packed full of grease. Slide that on, the brake goes on. It's like super slick kit. Very simple. I need some tools. Danny here, behind the camera, Coattail Speed Shop. Uh, it's actually more schmoo with me. All right. Thank you. Okay, so we got the bearing pound or the bearing in and then the seal pounded in. So that's all good. Now, I didn't actually check this side to make sure the bearing would fit on this spindle. I just assumed because the other side it would be fine, but I guess we'll see what happens. So we'll set this on there right quick. It appear to go on pretty good. Hold it in your lap like a baby. Shmoo it a little. <laughs> yeah, get some of this junk out of here. Got the other baron. Oh, got a little. There we go. Now it comes with everything you need and what I like is I think in all the other kits, you end up having like double stack washers and all that. I don't think this one's gonna require that, which is pretty sweet. So, and it's got multiple, it's drilled in a few different ways, which is nice. Just makes it easier to get a more accurate torque. And you know us here, Accurado. Oh, I should have grabbed a, you pass me those blue handle pliers that are on the old control arms. There you go. Look at that, you figured out blue pliers and control arms. I know what control arms are. Okay, so you know what? Actually, while you're at it, you're getting things. Can you grab, I need the 
The caliper's out of the box. There's one caliper. So you can grab the whole box or whatever. <laughs> well, there's only one thing. Box? Nope. Does it have a caliper in it? I don't know what a caliper is. The brake caliper. Come oh. on, dude. You did this on your car, didn't you put the brakes on? Yes. Or did I do that? Well, you did the brakes, I did the uh, Oh, you did the, the hammering. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And now I need the brake clean, that ratchet with the Allen head socket on there. And uh, socket, and the the never sees, and then right behind you, there's a uh, a can of, or a tube of uh, brake anti squeal. Oh, this is working out great for me. The best part is you came out to see what I wanted for lunch. And now I'm working. Now you're working. So now I didn't tighten the. Those are what I need, yep. Now these have a left and a right. We've obviously put the left on or the driver's side on that side. These are your standard, this actually might have been factory on these things. These things came with disc brakes. But uh, this is your like single piston slider deal Chevy caliper, which is on friggin' everything. Oh, this one's actually labeled as an R on it. I was gonna say, the only thing you really gotta make sure is when you put these on, that the bleeder is up because you can put them on the wrong way. I have done that. Not ashamed to admit that. Probably did it last week. So, let's take these out real quick. When you put it on there, your piston will be on the inside. Your fill is here, or your line in is there, and your bleeder has to be up. If you put it in like that, you'll never get the air out, right? So you don't want that. Now what I always do here, a little bit of anti-squeak. If it actually makes a difference or just makes me feel better, but I'll go ahead and just put a little schmucking on there. Uh, whoops. Only the anti-squeak worked on people. Oh, God. <laughs> if only, there's the squeak right there. We'll put a little bit just where it kind of rides on the caliper. Or on the, uh, yeah, on the caliper, right? I said it right. Okay, so we got that. Brake pads. Brake pads. See, I know things, I'm picking stuff up. You got it. I like to put just a little bit on the end and a little bit on the threads there. Well, usually Danny holds these. Oh, you know what we can do is put this on the nice painted surface. Now, God, the painting, what a freaking nightmare. I don't like painting Everyone things. Everyone seemed, seemed worried that you were changing your ways. I'm a sellout, clearly. I've got these cheap Chinese disc brakes. I've got nice hair. Um, what was I gonna do now? Oh yeah, put it together. <laughs> okay, so pull this out a little bit. Whoa, watch the paint! Oh no. All that work just to mess it up. <laughs> Who are you, the comment section? Yes. Okay, so we'll put that in there. This thing has a set of sliders in it, which are kind of already lubed up from the factory, so I'm gonna say it's fine. As I say that, it's stuck. Perfecto. Now we're just gonna kind of run these through and it lines everything up. So the caliper bracket is threaded. So that's obviously where the pin's gonna thread into. And this is some riveting stuff here. Again, the only thing, a lot of times these calipers have a little rubber O-ring in there. That's why I put a little and he sees on it just so it kind of slides in there, nice like. Doesn't push that little O-ring out. Nice like. Nice like. Put on there. Perfect. These you want to ramrod them fairly tight. Okay, we're not pushing the little ring out. This is a nice kit, I gotta say. By doing this and the Tri-5 kit, it's pretty sweet. I guess this must be though, just like a, since it came stock and maybe had it figured out a little bit better than Trap Hop Chevrolet's. Snug. And then in the other garage, we'll do it on another video. The kit did come with a brake lines. It came with the master and a booster proportioning valve. The whole dealio. Okay, so that's that. 
I'll blast this off with some brake clean just to make sure we got everything you know, kind of taken care of. And once we have the spring in there, we'll set the wheel bearing by just kind of cranking it, spinning it till it stops. I think it requires a quarter turn loose or whatever the instruction said, but basically loosen it, it'll be fine. Put a cotter pin in there and then check it on your first oil change. Uh, that's that. It did come with a few extra little zerks. We gotta put that in the control arms, but all we have left now to do, a little voice crack, is put the springs in. We're reusing the old springs. So I did last night, I painted them. I just painted them flat black. Whatever, they'll be fine. We jammed in there, no one will see them. And like that, like that, it does look good, I'm not gonna lie. It looks good, but typically by this point, the video would have been done, edited, and uploaded, and I'd be having Danny make a thumbnail. So I'm still working. My hands are completely destroyed. Get back to work. All right. Well, I'm gonna see how these fit, and then we'll uh, finish off this video. So we'll see if we can get this together without using a big old spring compressor. I'm confident you're in my way. In life and in video. Oh, so. You can see the control arm is way far down and the spring's at a goofy angle. Now, if this was in the car, or if the motor and all that was in the car and the fenders and everything. Hey, can I be on that side, please? <sighs> well, I can't see. You can't see, you didn't use your x-ray vision? So, oh, well, we might be able to trick it. So typically you'd kind of do this and you actually compress the spring. No, we're not where we want to be at the top. So you have your coil and then there's like a little pigtail at the end of the spring. So the bottom's lined up. The top also has a little piece to kind of get in there. This one might be a little big. Oh, we might lock out. Now this is where it's a little sketchy because you might die. There we go, spring went in. So this is the dangerous part. This is why I hate coil springs. So right now there's very minimal tension on it, but obviously we're jamming the spring between the lower control arm and the frame. And as we're pushing up, that spring is trying to push it back and it's holding up the front end of the car. So it's obviously a pretty stout spring. So you wanna be careful. Um, again, if you have a lot of weight on the car, it's really, you're probably fine. We don't have that option, but we do have this, the Danomatic. So I'm gonna jam this sucker through, and this will act as a little safety. Ultimately, we're gonna run out of uh, jacking tension anyways, but we just got her in there. So if we put this on, like so. Really mess up the paint with it. That's what we do here. This will now eliminate the spring from being able to explode out and rip our faces off. So now we're safe. No matter what happens, if the spring decides to pop out or anything, we're now we're gonna clamp it by threading it instead of using the weight. But I'll show you here. Kind of keep going. Oh, there we go, there we go. It's now lifting the car off the jack stand, so that's as much as we were gonna be able to get. So where's our ranch? There's no way I put it away, did I? Wow. It's weird when a wrench is where it's supposed to be and not on the ground, lost with my hammers. You actually just missed those, just having a little freak about a hammer. Danny found it. So now, let's see if we can do this. Is there a pair of vice grips anywhere? There you go. Look at you using your eyeballs. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and vice grip just so I can kind of hold it. Very little pressure on that. Okay, make sure we have lots of threads on the bottom, which we do, because obviously if you're tightening something, it can loosen or do whatever on the bottom, which is no bueno. Now this should start to pull up that control arm, which in turn will tighten up the spring. 
And then we gotta go and then we have the uh, spindle. We're gonna do this like live action. This is good TV right here. Honestly, it's a good how-to. There's, there's very rare that I do things that are like, here's how you probably should do it, but I've done this a lot of times. Everybody uses those claw style spring compressors. I hate that. That's just me though. Okay, so now I'll take the ah, spindle, which we just built. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, almost went over there. <laughs> I was a little cranky about it. Okay, so that's on. So now all we gotta do is tighten it until, oh, this bolt went stiff. Until them two go in together. Whew. Which might be a little bit of screwing around, but. Oh no, we're doing good. <laughs> this is why I like time lapse, because I do see stuff like that and no one notices. Now no one probably would say anything and then you laugh. <laughs> oh, we're okay, thanks. <laughs> they don't call you dumb dumb speed shop. That's true. That is true. You can also, if you're really panicked, you can put the uh, floor jack under it or something like that, but I'm pretty confident in this. What this is? 5 8 rod or some ridiculous number I have here. It'll probably hold like 20,000 pounds. So it's meant for. Uh, actually, you want to give that a couple of pumps, there. It'll help it out. See if it's. Hang on, hang on. You're on. You're on the dust shield, dude. Oh, it's bent. You bent the shit out of it. Hear that noise? That's forever the Danielle. <laughs> pump it. Okay, pump it. I'm not used to having nice things. You gotta turn it so it's not. Uh... Bend it back. Well, I will. But for the next three months, while we're right, rotisserie, we're steering this thing. Well, I mean, it, like, where is it? Yeah, give it a couple of pumps. Keep going, keep going, keep going. There we go. Keep going. That made no difference. I thought it might. So you got some little compression in it. I'll make it a little easier. Whew. Give her a couple more pumps. Actually, it, does, it did make a difference. Keep going. Okay. So basically what's happening now is we have to weigh the car on it, and as I'm tightening it down, it's a little easier. I think it's hard to give another pump. Don't want to lose that. Where's my hammer? This lower ball joint is very. See what the hammer there is. Very stiff. Oh man, is that ever stiff? Why is that? <laughs> is it jammed on something? Yeah, let's keep going, see what happens. I have confidence it's a ball joint, it's meant to figure itself out. I also put this upper control arm in, give it a couple of pumps. I put it in a little bit back, we could move it ahead. Keep going, one more? It'll make a difference. Might as well do it while it's all under tension and stress. This should just kind of... She needs a little grease. Give her a pump. Another one. Another one. Are you working in unison here? Another one. Keep going. Keep going. And you're just really working all the angles here. Do another one. Almost. 
Get another pump. Another one. Ever again? Man, this thing is. These ball joints are tight from fitment standpoint. There we go. So snug this girl on. Mint. That one on. Okay, let floor jack out. Okay, all the way, yeah, drop down. Steer's fine. Well, the steering stop works. Who'd have thought? Now we can just loosen this thing, which shouldn't take too much. There we go. Okay, so now there's no tension on that held up with the control arm, or the spindle I should say. There you go. Okay, installed. So that's that. Let me get the kit. Pull out the Daniel scratch. Well, there we go. <laughs> now I was going to do the steering, but I was looking at it. The adjuster sleeves are all, they're pretty beat. So I'll get a pair of those. I'll we'll do that some other time. I might put the box in. We'll see with the center link, but that's that. I'll do the other side now just on my own. Cause you guys already seen the magic happen. And that's pretty much that. Look at that's a lot of new parts. And again, if you're not painting everything, you can do it in a day. If you're painting stuff, give it a week. See you in a bit. Well, um, I kind of put this all together. We got the other side all dialed. I was going to scuff this and paint it and stuff. And then I got sidetracked cutting the car in half in the back. Oh, little, little teaser, little teaser. Oh no. So quarter panels out, obviously that's working on. So by the time I scuff this and paint it, it slows down production. And then ultimately we're gonna make a hell of a mess in here. So I decided not to do that. I ordered some steering bits. The adjusters off Scamazon today, so those will be here in the next couple of days and we can put the steering on all brand new, painted, and maybe even hang some fenders and core support and all that, but right now my focus is the back of the car, so I'll be the next probably two or three videos while we're waiting on parts and then really, like final assembly. That's the plan. So thank you so much for watching, hopefully you guys got something from this, and uh, you know, you can kind of have this done in a day if you work pretty hard in a couple days if you want to paint stuff. Thanks so much for watching. Comment below. Uh, subscribe if you don't mind. And I will see you on the next one. There's a lot of cutting in the next one.